Good morning. Uh, in this lecture, we will uh, see about optimal power flow, uh, how to achieve it using some another method. So one we have already seen how you can treat it as a problem of economic dispatch and uh, solve it, approach the problem from a view on perception of penalty factors. So now here what we will do is we'll do something very similar to what you have learned in load flow. And I would be presenting the methodology rather than detailed uh, equations and mathematical derivations that I think is beyond the scope of this lecture. So we will focus on the methodology and how you can go about it. For those who are interested, uh, you have to uh, go deeper into it. And uh, we will just see how it is done. So first, we will uh, take the problem of optimal power flow without inequality constraints. So in the solution of any power flow, what we also call as load flow, there are two types of equations. One is the equality equation, which is nothing but your power balance equation. That is the active and reactive power generated should be equal to the load plus the loss that we call as the equality constraint. And inequality constraints are all operational constraints, like where your variables, either dependent or independent, they are forced to lie within a limit. For example, the voltage should lie between V minimum and V maximum. The power generation of each plant uh, or generator should be within V, PG min and PG max. The Q limits and so on. So those are all the inequality constraints. So first let us see uh, and understand what is the optimal power flow problem when we don't have inequality constraints. So the function to be optimized is of course the cost function. C. It's a CI which is a function dependent on PGI, how much of generation is there. Now, what are the load flow equations we have to solve? Again, just let's recall. Uh, what are the type of buses we have in load flow studies? First, you have the slack bus, where the voltage and angle are specified. The angle is the reference for all the other bus angles. And then you have the PV buses, where you specify the active power and the magnitude of the voltage. And you have PQ buses, where you specify the active and reactive powers. So uh, what are the load flow equations to be solved? Whatever method you use. So at all the PV and PQ buses, this equation has to be satisfied. What is this equation? PI, PI is the injected power, which I calculate from the given values of generation and demand. Okay, so PI, if you see here, PI is PGI minus PDI. Similarly, the injected reactive power is QGI minus QDI. Okay, so PI I calculate from the data. And what is the other term? This other term is what I get as an estimate. Okay, so PI minus this term should be equal to zero. And this, since P is specified at all the PQ and PV buses, this must be satisfied at all the buses, except the slack bus. Now at PQ buses, I must have this. So now you may be wondering why this plus sign, if you see in your load flow equations, you would have formulated, it's easier to formulate PI minus JQI instead of PI plus JQI. Okay, that is to get an easy uh, formulation. You would have already seen that in Gauss-Seidel and Newton-Raphson method. So at all PQ buses, this equation must be satisfied. So how many equations do I have totally? I have these equations will boil down to N minus one, assuming there are totally N buses. So minus one because I don't write it for the slack bus. And this is only at the PQ buses. So these are my load flow equations, typical load flow equation. Okay. And uh, so in vector form, well, how do I write it as? So I will write it as 
a function f of x y equal to so normally whenever you want to use newton raphson method you will write as f of x or f of x y is equal to 0 that's how we do it so here you see this is actually pi if you bring this term to the right hand side but i have brought it to the left hand side and equated it to 0 so that i can apply nr uh, method so these are the set of equations which i numbered 2 and these are the set of equations number 3 so i have to solve in vector form if i write it equation 2 and 3 which is for active power pi for all the pq and uh, for for every pq bus okay so 2 is for pi and 3 is for qi okay and for every PV bus, I'll have only two. That is the equation corresponding to PI because QI doesn't come into picture here. It's not specified. QI is not specified. Clear? So now what is X? X are all the dependent variables. So what are my dependent variables in the load flow problem? They are the voltage magnitudes and angles. Okay? Magnitudes at the PQ buses because at the PV bus it is specified and angles at all the buses. Clear? So that is my dependent variables. So you see magnitude of the voltage and the angle for every PQ bus and only the angle for PV buses. Next, Y. What is Y? Y are the independent variables. What are my independent variables? Independent variables means variables which you have specified. So at the slack bus, it is V and delta, V1 and delta 1. Normally, for ease of programming, we designate either the first bus or the last bus number. We give it as the slack bus. So V1 delta 1 is specified for the slack bus. And for every PQ bus, PI and QI. And for every bus, PV bus, PI and magnitude of VI. So these are my independent variables, independently specified. Clear? Now, this vector of independent variables, I will break it into two sub vectors, u and p. u are controllable independent variables. That means what can you control? For example, PGI, you can control the generation, right? And the voltage magnitude you can control at PV buses because you have the excitation which by which you can control the voltage magnitude. And then you can control the slack bus voltage. And if you have reactive power support, you can control the Q. Okay. So out of these independent variables, I designate a sub vector U of controllable variables. And P are uncontrollable variables. For example, I cannot control the demand. The demand is the customer's choice. So it is not controllable by me. I cannot say this should be the demand. Okay. So what have we done? We have expressed the general load flow equations of the form F of X, Y. X a vector of dependent variables and Y a vector of independent variables. Again, Y we have divided into two subgroups, a vector of controllable variables and another of non-controllable or uncontrollable variables. So now what is my optimization problem? I have to minimize the problem CXU. Obviously, I'm only interested in U because that's the only thing I can control. So the cost, the cost as a function of the dependent variables and the controllable variables. I have to minimize this. So as I said, we will only look at the mathematical formulation and will not go into the details of the uh, derivations. Okay. Subject to the inequality constraints, f of x u p equal to 0. So the inequality constraints are a function of all the variables. So, like in other methods, optimization methods, we uh, introduce a Lagrangian function, L, a function of x, u, and p, which will be your optimization function plus the Lagrangian multiplier and the constraint, f, x, u, p. Okay? Now, what are the necessary conditions for minimization? So, the partial derivative 
of the Lagrangian function, which each of the variables must be zero. Okay, so first I differentiate with respect to x. So if you just look at this, so this, if I differentiate with respect to x, it would be dou c by dou x. And this, when I differentiate with respect to x, lambda would be a constant, and I would have dou f by dou x. Okay, dou f by dou x into lambda is equal to zero. Similarly, when I differentiate with respect to u, I'd have dou c by dou u plus dou f by dou u transpose into lambda equal to zero. Now, the third variable is lambda, that is my Lagrangian multiplier. So when I differentiate this, this first term differential with respect to lambda is zero because this term does not depend on lambda. So I have to do this, okay? So when I differentiate with respect to lambda, I get fx of up, right, is equal to zero. So this is nothing but my constraint itself. This is nothing but my equality constraint, that is your load flow equations. So these are the equations to be solved for getting the minimal power flow solution. So it has to be solved iteratively. And what is my correction I do in the iteration? I What is my only controllable vector? That is u. So I adjust the controllable variables to move from one solution to the next solution. Since I want to minimize the function, so the next solution should give me a lower value for the objective function. So for such methods, we use the steepest gradient method. And understand here, dou f by dou x, x is my dependent variables, that is the voltage magnitudes and angles. Therefore, dou f by dou x is nothing but your, so what is the kind of uh, terms you would get? You would get f is p and q, okay? So uh, you would get dou p by dou v, dou p by dou delta, dou q by dou v, dou, p, dou q by dou delta, and so on. So dou f by dou x is nothing but the Jacobian matrix you uh, evaluate in your NR method. So the step-by-step -step algorithm for getting a load flow or a power flow uh, through this method is as follows. Make an initial guess of the control variables. So the control variables, as I told you, will depend on your system and what uh, devices and mechanisms you have for control. So make an initial guess of the control variable and solve for the load flow solution by NR method. This one, this equation, you solve. This is nothing but your typical power flow solution, which equations which you have seen. Solve it by NR method. And then you compute delta x, that is the change in the variable. Uh, by this, this is nothing but your NR method solution. And update the variables which are dependent. So update the dependent variables in step two. So step two is basically solution of the equations using newton raphson method with your assumed values of control variables. Clear? Fine. Next, solve equation four for lambda. Okay. So what is equation four? We'll have okay. from this I solve for lambda. Remember these are all vectors, so I'm using inverse. It's a matrix. So dou f by dou x. This is transpose inverse into dou c by dou x. So from this you calculate lambda, and using this value of lambda, calculate the gradient. Okay. So calculate the gradient vector that is delta L. And if this gradient vector, that is the differentiation of the Lagrangian function with respect to U, okay? So this is your gradient vector. So calculate the gradient vector. And if the gradient vector is below an acceptable tolerance, you have reached your optimal solution. If it is not, then update the control variables. So here the crux is how do I update? So one way is use, as I told you, the negative of the gradient. 
This is called as the steepest descent method. So delta u is some value alpha, some constant alpha into the gradient vector. So alpha you have to choose carefully. Uh, if you choose a very small value, you will get convergence, but it may take a number of iterations. And if you choose a very large value, it may start oscillating. So what happens is, you just say this is your solution. Now I have started with this assumption, initial value. Now I slowly go on moving towards the solution, right? By step by step, by small steps. Now if I take a large step, what would happen when I'm very far away, I can take jumps. But when I come close, I may go above the solution. And then in the next iteration, you will come below, above, below. This is what we call as oscillations. So you will be oscillating around the optimal point. Sometimes it will be less, sometimes it will be more. So this normally, if you ever get into that situation, in any, any problem where you're using an iteration, uh, you start getting oscillations, uh, understand that it's because of a large step size. So reduce the step size and you will get convergence, okay? So now, on top of the inequality constraints, if you have some equality uh, constraints, then that is this, this is the inequality constraint. So u minimum is less than u is less than u max. So this could be for any of your controllable variables, for example, pg, pg min, and at the PV buses, your control on the voltage magnitude is through the exciter, and the exciter will have its own limitations, so like that, okay? Simple, as we always do. If it falls below this u min, then you let it be equal to u min. If it is above u max, let it be equal to u max. If it is in between, then just let it be whatever value you get. Okay, so ui mu is equal to ui max if the old plus the delta is greater than ui max. That means when I add delta u, I move here, more than u max, then let it be equal to u max. Now when I add delta u, I get less than u min. So then you let it be equal to u min. If you by adding, if you're within the limits, then update the control variables. Now, uh, best practice is even when you have hit the limits, you compute the gradient every iteration so that if any variable which has fallen outside the limits in the subsequent iterations, it comes back within the limits, then you can continue updating it. Okay. So this is the way you solve for this. So as I told you, I have not presented any details of well, what is delta u, what is dou f by dou x, those expressions. Uh, I, it is not necessary. Uh, the idea here is only to present the approach. Okay, how to go about it. Thank you.